What's going on everybody? C4, welcome back to the channel. Today we're for episode 18 of our Matter 23 Pink Slips franchise. However, it might feel like a brand new chapter as I am changing up the format just a little bit. I've built my channel over the last almost decade on long form content and we currently have the Panthers franchise which is 25 minutes to half hour each video. Depend even even longer if there's a double header. Rebuilds are going on for upwards of an hour. But YouTube in 2022 rewards condensed short form content. It is what it is, man. And I've been experimenting over the last little bit. How can I create short form content? Not necessarily making all of my content short form content. Don't want to do that at all. And I won't do that. But also just finding a way to integrate short form content amongst my longer form content. And I've been trying to do that with different rebuilds and stuff like that. And while the results, the data has been solid, has been kind of what I'm looking for. I'm starting to see like, okay, the robots like that. I didn't really like what was happening in the rebuilds because I felt like you make shorter form rebuilds. The issue with rebuilds as a whole is that you're not, you're not getting the connection with players. That's what I want to try to strive for. So I feel like something like pink slips. I have a couple other ideas that I'm, that I'm going to try for short form content, but I think pink slips could actually benefit from that just a little bit because the gameplay in pink slips can absolutely be condensed. Gameplay in pink slips for the most part is kind of meme. It's can we get the big shot plays? We try to build the biggest, fastest, strongest team. Then you have the absolute botches. That stuff there can kind of be condensed and chopped up into a appropriate highlight. But pink slips is, you know, did C4 win and what players did he get? What players can I vote on? Or did C4 lose? What players did he lose? What players can I vote that he can lose out on? That's kind of like what people I think click on when they want to see pink slips amongst the memes. And I feel like that might be better suited for the short form content. So that is what we're going to try here today, experimenting just a little bit. Still two gameplays per episode, but we're going to condense this and we're going to try to make something that is for people, not just the YouTube robots. I never want to just make something for the sake of I'm only doing this so that it could have a chance at being successful on YouTube because of the YouTube robots. But I fully understand that personally, even for me, 25, 30 minutes aren't, they're not for everybody, those style of videos. And I do want to have something that's a little bit more digestible on the channel. So if you guys like it, are there any other suggestions? Absolutely leave in the comment section below. I'm trying to make the best content possible for you guys. But without further ado, let's get into episode 18 of Pink Slips version 2.0. Upgrade from the last video. This top suggestion came from Matt saying get Cole Komet and Red as our top two players. We're going to send our backup tight end Nicholas, normal dev 72, Togi 72, normal dev. And red here is 73 with a hidden depth, so straight up just a quick upgrade there. And someone like Cole Komet is a big time upgrade at tight end. While we have an athletic freak in Jelani Woods, who's been playing well in the sim, he's not so good when we're actually playing with on the six, drops a lot of passes. He's a nice tight end too, but Cole Komet absolutely can be the safety net that we need for Malik Willis. Matt also suggested, and because we won a five star and we rolled it, a trip to Mexico, which means a plus two physical attribute boost for speed, acceleration, agility, change of direction, jumping, freaking anything else, strength that we find. And he believes Sauce Gardner. Looking at the upgrade, man, he's feeling bigger, badder, stronger than ever. He's an 84 overall. I, I think he'll probably be 85. I don't think he's, wearing, he's gonna jump up too, too much, but you never know. He's up to an 85. Oof. Oh, 86, Sauce Gardner. Looking good, kid. And that now with the plus two has him tied with Jameson Williams as our highest overall player. Tariq Woolen noticed that uh, Sauce Gardner got to take a trip to Mexico. And now he's over here being like, hey, man, where's my trip? This game, Sauce gets 2,500 XP, get two plus interceptions with Tariq Woolen. Well, that's all right. Just be amazing. Put up an all time game and get some sort of upgrade game one we have the ravens pretty interesting roster got some nice names on there kyle hamilton darnell mooney you got hassan riddick lane johnson i'd love to get Lane on the team we have to have a massive win uh, even though it was a fancy draft still found a way to get ronnie stanley and lamar jackson back on the squad and zeke elliott maybe isn't an utter cheat code in hall of fame every single game type player now he's not on the cowboys we'll find out so we started this thing out on defense and we had to contain lamar jackson but more so Zeke Elliott, man, that's the guy you always got to worry about when you see on Zeke Elliott. So that's the one thing we want to take away. Because he's got a guy just in the blink of an eye, goes for like 800 yards. We get a stop, course our offense, next drive, throws an interception, and we just keep bailing them out. Different format of pink slips, but everything else is still kind of the same. Our offense in the sim never does anything until they do. Who else 
George Pickens 51 yard touchdown. And on the defensive side, continuing to contain Lamar Jackson and Zeke Elliott the best we can. Now, second half, we get to start on offense, and it's all cool. Komet, the newcomer at tight end that you guys voted on for us to bring in. He made a bunch of big plays here, extending the drive, which is important. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was my first game of the day. The worst part wasn't even any reception is what happened right after. Literally, the next play in the sim, Zeke Elliott. 80-yard touchdown, so we knew we are going to have to score. Linebacker bit, able to hit the slant to Jamison Williams to get back into this game just a little bit. But knowing that we had to go up against Zeke, you just you just knew it was going to happen, man. You just knew it was going to happen. It was going to have to be us on offense, not making mistakes, going to Cole Komet, who, in my opinion, would get the game ball on the offensive side of the ball, especially for a debut. He was outstanding when we needed to go to him. Our defense finally got a stop near the end of the game. Who else but Troy Anderson? And we were able to kill it off and get a very much needed victory. It's probably not going to be a huge high star, big upgrade game. But we'll be able to get something pretty decent here from the Ravens. So take a look at the big slip scoring, won the game, which is worth one star. Looking at our player performances, Malik Willis with three passing touchdowns is a half star. Kenny Wang, who over 100 yards rushing, is a half star. Good performances, hell of a debut from Cole Komet and George Pickens, strong as ever, but no pink scoring there. We did get a half star from Tariq Woolen getting an interception. He also had a PBU, which should work well for his breakout scenario. But overall, it ends up being a two and a half star performance. A five-point upgrade. And we hit the breakout for Tariq Wool. Not exactly sure what we get. If it's a dev or XP, it is 2,500 XP. So with a five-point upgrade, we had an opportunity to get Kyle Hamilton. But uh, call me bias. I like I like the Cookie Monster. Latte Taylor a little bit more. So we're just going to use this as a depth edge move. We're going to send them good. And in return, we're going to get Nick Bonito, who's very pink slippy in his own right as a pass rusher. I don't know how much he's going to play, but he does come in as our top left defensive end. Some interesting players on the Seattle Seattle and Crane. They got Drake London, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Frymouth, if we want to continue to upgrade the tight end spot potentially, but uh, not seeing like that Holy Grail type upgrade here. Just win so we don't lose a player. We'll check in on Malik Willis, give him his praise. He's been playing better, beat the Seattle Seahawks. 300 plus passing yards, sure. George Pickens got a massive plus two upgrade in week, which is awesome, up to an 81. And Sasha, who started this episode with a plus two upgrade, earns one more in game after a great week of practice. All right, so starting this game on defense against Seattle. Uh, we knew we we're gonna have to bring pressure. They got a young rookie quarterback who loves to scramble. And look at that first sack, Nick Benito, the newcomer from our first victory. And then, of course, holding to a field goal. It's a quick three and out from our offense. I'm starting to notice a trend here. And look at this guy, man. Just, just a pain in the asshole. Anytime you got to deal with the scrambling court. It's just, it's not my forte. Not my personal strength as it relates to Madden. And uh, this guy made a couple huge chunk plays here. And while there was, like, boomer bust sack, just applying a lot of pressure, a lot of blitzes, it did feel like a lot of times Seattle was able to use their best players. So they got two straight field goals. So it was good bendo break from our defense. Fortunately, next time we go on offense, we had to settle for a field goal. Then they just gave the ball to Nick Chubb, who is another guy that has put up some massive games against me here in Madden 23. And relying on their star players is exactly what Seattle did here as they find Mike Thomas right in the corner of the end zone. Both feet in. First touchdown of the game goes to Seattle until this. Holy shit, go! Oh, oh do it to They respond next drive. Nick Benito pedally extends the drive, and they're able to go to Amon Ross St. Brown, 34 yards. Then it was our turn, man. We were able to move the ball. Seattle's defense wasn't Legion of Boom-esque, and who else but Cole Komet, the newcomer for today's episode. Always reliable. Always open. It's been great to see that. And, uh, you know, every now and again, the defense, you know, it's one of those like, oh, broken clock is right twice a day. We got a stop. Missed field goal. It's Cole Komet starting the ensuing drive off hot. And it's another f relatively newcomer to the team, George Pickens, getting both feet in to put another touchdown on the board for Mexico City. Fourth and three. 
Pressure's on. Oh. What a win. That's huge. Take a look at the scoring. We won the game, which is worth one star. We had the turnover battle, which is worth a half star. And for our player stats, three passing touchdowns from Malik Willis is a half star. And on the defensive side, some solid performances. But Tanner Muse with his 107-yard pick six gets one and a half stars, giving us three and a half on the day, a plus seven upgrade incoming. So he didn't go off, but Malik Willis, who also is now on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers... Uh, got a nice boost for the next game, the next episode. So here are the upgrades. You guys can vote on. There was two upgrades I didn't even really want to consider. Uh, we could potentially got Amon Ross St. Brown, but we would have had to give up George Pickens. Not interesting. We could have got Pat Fryermuth, but we would have to give up Cole Komet, who's been outstanding this episode. Wasn't overly interested. So we could send Carrington, our speedster, 72 normal rookie out of Purdue. And with our plus seven, we'd be able to get Drake London, six foot four, 220 pound star dev. Got the face scan. I don't know if that ever plays a, a part in your guys' votes. But that is something to consider with a plus seven. I mean, I'm just throwing this in there. Uh, there's no real other combinations. I guess I could find something potentially. Spencer Brown, 72 normal dev. He's our starting right tackle. And we get Nate Green, who's a 74 hidden dev rookie tackle out of Notre Dame. So if you did that, I would just, I don't know, maybe I'd throw on a draft pick or something like that. The last upgrade is just adding more depth to the linebacking core. We could send our depth linebacker, Cam McGrone who is 69 normal, and get an athletic freak in Jamin Davis, 76 star dev. This will be a plus seven upgrade, but 90 speed, 94. So, I mean, he'd fit right in the linebacking core, give us flexibility. It'd still be likely Rodriguez and, uh, you know, Troy Anderson, but maybe give us more flexibility. Lou Chanel as a pass rusher. Could be potential overcome. I'm not going to lie. Drake London seems like the easy option, but I'm trying to give you guys as many options as possible. Please vote in the comment section below. and We'll kick off the next episode with the upgrade you guys want to see. And that'll do for me here today in episode 18 of Madden 23 Pink Slips. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Make sure you vote in the comments below. And I'll see you on the next one. Till next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace out. Love you. Have a good one.